So now I get to introduce your presenter, Peter Quay Wright. <laughs> and Peter is on the board of directors for IBERT, very actively participating in all that we're doing for each other and for ourselves. And he is a certified hypnotherapist with more than 25 years of experience. Uh, he is a certified life between lives hypnotherapist, and he works a lot with spirit releasement. And he's helped more than 1900 clients through hypnotherapy by Zoom, phone, or on Skype or in person. And his office is in Santa Barbara, California. And today he has some very unique approaches that he's collaboratively developed with spirit guides. And he will present those to us today. So welcome, Peter, and thanks for being here. Thank you, Holly, for the introduction. You're welcome. So welcome to A Metaphysical Approach to Resolving Hidden Karmic Agreements from Past Lives and This Life. So today I'm going to share a bit more than that by using um, my hypnotherapy practice to go into more detail about that, because I'm eager to share with you a variety of tools and techniques that I found to be helpful for me that could in fact be helpful to you. So I'll be starting this with a bit more about myself. I'll then focus on the specific protocols that I use during a hypnotherapy session. This will include the free consultation that I offer, the two hour hypnotherapy session, and a one hour follow up. And then along the way, I'll talk about the protocols. And then at the end, I'll share highlights from three different client sessions to give you a better understanding of how this all fits together. And at the close of that, I'll open the floor to questions and comments. So let's get started. As Holly mentioned, I've been in the field for 25 years. So I've taken lots of workshops and classes from some of the leading lights in hypnotherapy. But from this training and working with my clients, I developed my own series of protocols, particularly in recent years, in partnership with a hypnotherapist colleague of mine who channels the Ascended Masters. And so the Ascended Masters she channels have dictated several of the protocols that I'll be talking about today. With this rather unique metaphysical approach, um, I'd like to first start with an overview of what that is. After taking the client into trance, I then guide the client up into the high vibration of the fifth dimension, where all the answers can be found from the guidance that joins us in the light. Once there, we work closely with the client's heart and higher self and all parts of the client. Typically, we may invite Archangel Michael, Lady Master Kuan Yin of the Karmic Council, other archangels, ascended masters, spirit guides, loved ones who've passed on, plus others from the light who just show up to help us for my client's highest good. I've been truly surprised and amazed at the success that can come by using these protocols, which I'll be describing today. My clients have been able to come to closure with some very complicated issues in just one two hour session. Maybe. Throughout, we've been inspired by the loving and wise guidance that joins us for these sessions. I should also say that today is the first time that I presented my, metaphys my metaphysical approach to my peers. So I'm eager to share these protocols in hopes that you might discover some tools that you can add to your own practice so you can become even more effective in working with your clients. As Holly mentioned, there will be a link on the iBART website in the next few days, so you can download a complete PDF of the today's transcript, plus some additional protocols that I have not included because they're just too complicated to include in this particular session in order to give you as much value as possible. And of course, there'll be a video of this gathering that will be available um, on the website as well. So for those of you who are new to hypnosis, I'm going to go, go into some great detail about how I work with clients. And I find that by going into the detail today, you'll get an even better understanding of why some of these results uh, come forth. For you old timers who've been in the field for a while, take what you like. I'm hoping that it will be helpful to you as well. 
and for clarity purposes, I will refer to my client as a she or her during the presentation. All right, so a little bit more background on me. Like many of you, I believe I've we've been led step by step on this journey as a hypnotherapist. When I was a kid, my older brother had a comic book collection. And one day, a particular Superman comic book caught my attention. Back then, comic books had ads in their last few pages. And in this Superman comic, there was an ad for a book entitled, How to Hypnotize Your Friends. Whoa. <laughs> I thought to myself, how cool is that? So I went up to my father, who was a mortgage banker, and I showed him the ad and I said, Dad, I really want to buy this book, but I don't have any money. Can you help me? Well, my father looked at the ad and looked at his loving eight-year-old son and said, that's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. <laughs> well, it killed it for 18 years, but the idea of hypnosis stayed with me. So after getting a master's degree in international relations, which means I can relate internationally, I came back to Washington, DC and began taking classes in, in hypnosis. And eventually I got certified as a hypnotherapist. In fact, the first hypnotherapy class that I took was taught by Janet Cunningham, who, as many of you know, was a long-term president of this organization just before Holly took over so it's the, it all continues. So this brings me to Uncle Harold. Several years ago, I was at a workshop as a participant and there was another hypnotherapist present and we engaged in idle chatter before the workshop began. During one of the breaks, he shared with me on his cell phone, part of a video of one of his client sessions. Now his client was in hypnosis and they had invited the clients, Uncle Harold, to join them in the imagination of the client. Uncle Harold had passed on years before, but in the video, you could see a little photograph of Uncle Harold dancing right next to the client's face. There was no photograph of Uncle Harold actually in the session room, but Uncle Harold was present, thank you very much, which proved to me that everybody is available to us in the trance state. And it's so easy for my client and me and you and your clients to connect with them through your and our imagination. I'm sure many of you are aware of this, but those of you who are not, this cast of characters includes people who are currently alive in physical body. We invite them to join us from, through your imagination, as well as those who've passed on. They include past life personalities, spirit guides, angels, archangels, ascended masters, up to and including God, source, or whatever you call the divine. And let's not forget the client's heart, higher self, various emotions, bodily sensations, and other parts that we can ask to work with us as well. In other words, parts therapy. So together, what I found is that all these parts, all these resources, know everything there is to know about the client from this life and past lives. And they're eager to partner with us to help the client resolve her issues and heal. So on to my practice. It starts with a free consultation. I start with a 30 to 45 minute free consultation by Zoom, phone, or Skype with a potential client. Once COVID quiets down, I hope to see clients in person once again. During this consultation, we talk briefly about the issues the client is seeking to resolve. And then I describe hypnosis and my metaphysical approach and the resources I use in working with my clients. I invest in this time because I want to determine if I believe I can help the client. Plus, I wanna make sure that the client is open to this particular approach since it is very different from talk therapy. I emphasize to my clients, as I'm sure you do as well, that their soul speaks through their imagination during a client and hypnotherapy session. And their soul is not making things up. Rather, it's translating what is inside of them into first thought, first feeling, first image, first voice. So I invite my client, as you do too, to be my tour guide, be my court reporter, and share with me whatever's happening as the session unfolds, because we're, of course, talking back and forth throughout the entire session. If we decide that this is a match based on the consultation, 
we schedule a two-hour hypnotherapy session by Zoom, phone, or Skype. I then send the client a link to my hypnotic induction. It's an MP3 with my voice, hypnotic music, designed to take them into trance and bring them out again. In fact, I joke with them by saying, the music is guaranteed to take you into trance. Do not disappoint the music. And I get a laugh or two from them, but it helps to lighten the whole idea of hypnosis. I include three one-page forms for them to fill out and email back to me before the session begins. One of those forms is for the, cl the client to state the goals that they have for the session. We then get together. The client is most likely at home, sitting in bed, sitting up, or in a recliner. I quickly summarize our earlier discussion of hypnosis and ask if there are any questions about my hypnotic induction. We quickly fine tune the client's goals. He's emailed to me in advance. Next, I ask, is there anyone you need to forgive or want to forgive? And why do I ask that? Because these individuals may show up during the session and I want some background as to who they are and what they, why they're there, if appropriate. I then ask another important question. Um, does the client have a specific term for God or source or the divine? Because we'll be working with all the guidance available to us during the session. And with that in mind, are there any saints, religious figures, loved ones who've passed on, shamanic animals, guides she turns to when things go wrong in her life, or anybody else that she calls upon when things go wrong? Some people have them, some don't. I just have learned to ask. I then write down the names. I ask her for permission then to invite these resources to join us for the session. I then officially start the a session by calling forth these resources that she's just shared with me, together with all of her other masters and teachers and guides, whether she knows them or not, plus my, uh, my own uh, guidance, inviting them to join us as well. When the client tells me that everyone's arrived, I welcome the, the group and ask them to assist us in resolving the specific issues that we want to focus on during the session, as I name the issues one by one. Then I add, of course, plus anything else that we can do to accomplish, uh, that we can accomplish for the client's highest good. I ask the client to take these goals into her heart and feel them strongly in her heart, and then send them out like a silent prayer to all those who've joined us from the light. I then ask her to send a silent prayer of gratitude through her heart to all those who've joined us. Uh, because from my perspective, we're setting ourselves up for success. We're both specifically asking for the assistance of guidance and then reinforcing it through silent prayers expressed through the client's heart. I then guide the client into hypnosis on a guided visualization up into the fifth dimension. How do we get into the fifth dimension? Well, I count to 10 three times, uh, slowly adding a lot more wording to describe what they might be experiencing and encouraging them to go higher and higher, up, up, up into the light. Um, when we finally get, so what is the fifth dimension? Good question. For me, the fifth dimension is where all the answers can be found. We can go anywhere, anyhow, any why, and any when. And because we're at a higher vibration, it's very easy for us to connect with the client's heart, higher self, and all the guidance available to both of us from the light. Plus, as I mentioned earlier, the guidance knows everything about the client from this life and past lives. So they show up to work in partnership with us to resolve the issues. And what I discovered, to my delight, is the guidance brings their to-do list to the session. And their to-do list takes precedence over the client's to-do list because they know where we need to go first. And often these issues, if they're complex, the guidance will take us there and help us figure out what wants to happen next, rather than going to the client's long list of to-dos when in fact each of these areas is interconnected with the route that we're working on at that particular moment. From this point on, I take careful notes of most everything the client says. So, we're now up in the light in the fifth dimension. So we ask the question, uh, the client, what does this place look like or feel like or seem like to you? What are you aware of up in the fifth dimension? 
first thought, first feeling, first image, and the like. They tell me, I write it down. I then invite the client's heart to join us. You may experience your heart as an image, a feeling, or a presence, a knowing, or perhaps an inner voice. How does your heart make itself known to me, to you? Um, for those who are visual, it could be a red heart right out in front of them. For those like me who are more auditory or kinesthetic, I could feel the heart maybe in my body or standing behind me. So we invite the heart to come forth as if you were channeling it with words like, I'm here. So the client channels, I'm here from the heart. Heart, how do you support Alice? What do you do for her? I take the notes. Heart, are you aware of Alice's higher self? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, can we access her higher self now? Yes. Okay, so I like to call upon that part of Alice that is infinite and wise, that part of her that is the higher self. Please come forth right now, and Alice, you may experience this as a feeling or an image or a knowing or an inner voice or a presence. How does your higher self make itself known to you? Again, the client describes that experience. So let's invite your higher self to announce its presence with words like, I'm here. Now, I'm not clairvoyant. I cannot look at the client on the Zoom call or whatever and say, I can see your higher self. I'm hoping the voice is the higher self, but I can't, you know, I don't know. I'm hoping, but that's not enough. So I asked um, Howard, who just joined the call today, who's going to be talking soon um, to the, to Arbart, came up from, with my, he came, shared with me this terrific uh, question to ask whatever comes forth. Are you in service to the light and love of the one infinite creator? Truth and nothing but the truth, yes or no. If it's not the higher self, it cannot lie and say, I sure am. So I use that question over and over again whenever another wisdom figure joins us from the light, just to make sure that we're talking with that particular high vibrational being. So higher self is here, I'm here. How do you support Alice? What do you do for her? I make notes of that. And then I ask the heart and higher self to join forces to form the beginning of the client's inner wisdom team. We will work in partnership with this team during the session. In fact, we'll be adding to the team as the session unfolds. Typically, Archangel Michael will join us as well as others from the light. And this could include the client's spirit guide or a loved one from the other side. As you'll see, often Lady Master Quan Yin and the Karmic Board will join us. Um, so we are gr growing your inner wisdom team of resources that we'll be turning to. And so once we form the team, I may turn to them and say, what wants to happen next? And they'll tell us. So I tune into the team on occasion if I need feedback from them about what wants to happen, or I wanna ask them a question about what is currently going on um, with the particular issues we're seeking to resolve. From here, I will take the client to a magic mirror of truth. By design, I've not mentioned to, this, to the client up front because I want it to be a surprise. So I invite the client to imagine standing in front of a magic mirror of truth. And as they do that, describe the frame. Is it made of wood or metal or glass or something else? Any frame is fine, but it's a way for them to focus their attention on the mirror itself. So as you easily look into the mirror, I want you to note your own reflected energy or body. In other words, describe whatever shows up, whatever you see or sense or feel in that mirror. Ideally, it should be my client as she is today with a big smile on her face. That rarely happens. Instead, here's what can typically show up. It could be the client as a child, or perhaps a past life personality, or a spirit guide, or a positive emotion, or an earthbound spirit, or a ghost, or negative energy, or simply colors moving across the screen, or maybe the mirror is completely blank. But whatever shows up, I'll draw a picture of it in my notes as the client describes it, writing down the words that the client uses to describe that energy in the mirror. From my perspective, 
that energetic image in the mirror is a metaphor of where we need to go first during our session. And on occasion, we'll periodically return to the magic mirror as the session unfolds uh, to see um, what, how it might change because often towards the very end of the session, we in fact do see the client as they are today with a big smile on their face. All right, so how do I work with the energy from the mirror? I invite that energy in the mirror to come forth right now and talk to us with words like, I'm here. Because my goal is to find out what it is and how it's affecting the client. Um, it could be uh, an earthbound spirit. It could be negative energy. As I mentioned, it could be a variety of things. So what I'm basically doing is trying to figure out through talking with that um, energy, are you a good witch or a bad witch? And are you helping or hindering the client? Um, so with earthbound spirits and negative entities, I'll be talking about them in more detail a little bit later, but I'm not gonna go into what they are and, and the like right now. Um, that information will be included if you need more information about them in the um, notes that I'll be sharing uh, through the website at the end of, um, once it gets posted there. So, next steps to determine the purpose of the energy in the mirror. We announce it to come forth with words like, I'm here. So I ask it, are you a part of Alice or something else? Truth and nothing but the truth. There are three possible answers. The first is, I'm a part of Alice. Okay, could be a spirit guide, could be positive emotion, could be the inner child, a past life personality, or some other positive part of the client. Second po possibility, are you a part of Alice or something else? Something else. Have you ever had your own human body? Yes or no, truth and nothing but the truth. If yes, it could be an earthbound spirits. In other words, a ghost. If the answer is no, it could be negative energy. So in working with that, um, if I suspect or am told that the energy is an earthbound spirit or a negative energy, I'll ask Archangel Michael to join us with words like, I'm here. So I ask Archangel Michael, are you in service to the light and love of the one infant creator? Yes or no? Thank, thank you for coming forth. Uh, typically he'll say yes. Would you please scan my client's energy field now and let me know if there are any intruders present that are negatively affecting my client? Because my thought is that that energy could be an intruder, earthbound spirit, negative energy, or something else. And I'd like him to tell me if in fact that is the case. And if it's not, we'll follow up with that energy and find out more about how it's affecting the client in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. But I want Archangel Michael to chime in right now and tell me what is it, because often he will. Um, so Archangel Michael scans the client, and if there are any intruders present, I'll ask him, how many? And he'll tell me, one, two, three, or whatever. Um, and again, this information is coming through the client as the client is channeling Archangel Michael. For an additional perspective, I'll ask the client's inner wisdom team to join us as well and share their ideas to see if they know anything. For example, I ask if there are intruders present, um, the inner wisdom team to join us now as the collective voice with words like, we're here. And here are some of the sample questions I might ask them. Have you been aware of this presence of the intruders in the past? How have they been affecting the client? And if the effect has been negative, would you work with Archangel Michael and me now to send them into the light or back where they came from so that my client can be free of their influence? Typically they say, yes, they will. So tell me inner wisdom team, again, they know everything there is about the client, heart and higher self and others. Are you aware of any karmic issues, any unfinished business from a past life or this life that involves these intruders and their effect on my client. I'm here, eager to hear from them. And can you tell us more about what happened in that past life or present life that karmically affect, is affecting my client today? Again, looking for 
clues, looking for information from the guidance that has joined us. Um, at this point, depending upon how the conversation has gone, I'll ask Archangel Michael to rejoin us. Here are some of the sample questions I might ask him. Um, all right, Archangel Michael, would you scan this intruder again and tell me even more about how this intruder has been affecting my client? Um, and I'll ask, is the presence of this intruder caused by something that happened to my client in this life or a past life or both? I'd ask that to the wisdom team. I ask that now to Archangel Michael. And is this intruder present due to a karmic lesson or contract that can be resolved today? Yes or no? Now, if the answer is yes, karmic contract or agreement, would it be helpful, Archangel Michael, to invite Lady Master Kuan Yin and the karmic board and ask them to join us now? So who's Lady Master Kuan Yin? She's the goddess of mercy and compassion and she's one of the major deities in Buddhism. She's also one of the female Ascended Masters. Kuan Yin, as many of you may know, um, not only sits on the karmic board, which is a body of eight Ascended Masters who dispense justice, karma, mercy, and judgment on behalf of each soul on earth. But at the same time, she's the epitome of motherly love, of compassion, of mercy. So we can appeal to Kuan Yin and the karmic board for their guidance in helping the client come to closure with this karma from the past life and or this life. So I invite Lady Master Kuan Yin and the karmic board to join us. We're here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming. Are you in service to the light and love of the one in creator? Yes. All right. Thank you. Would you be willing to work with us today to help my client resolve any karmic agreements that have allowed the negativity to affect her? Here are some sample questions. Is the presence of the earthbound spirit or negative intruder due to a karmic contract or agreement from this life or past lives? Yes or no? If so, can we help her come to closure with it now? Yes or no? If yes, Kuan Yin, what wants to happen next for my client to come to closure with this? We have two options. The first option, do we need to go into the story of that past life to find out what happened that's affecting her now? If the answer is yes, so if so, I'll ask the client's higher self to take the client back into that particular lifetime so we can find out the key turning points that led to this karma that's affecting her life now. Or I encourage you to use your own past life regression protocol to get those answers, to go back into the story or the circumstances that created the karma um, so that we can invite those key past life players to come forward and join us right now, together with Kuan Yin, the karmic board and Archangel Michael and the inner wisdom team and all those who've joined us for the session. So that's option number one going back into the lifetime. Option number two is, can we simply invite the key players to join us now from that past life, as well as from this lifetime, so we can find out from them what happened and how that unfinished business is negatively affecting my client's current life. So if the answer is yes to that, here are some sample questions. How many people show up? How are they dressed? Who are they from that lifetime? What happened? What was the overall story back then? What were the major turning points in that lifetime that created the karma affecting my client today? In other words, we're asking the key players from that life to come forth and talk to us, share with us what happened. Again, the client is channeling this. So once we find out what the story was, how it has been affecting the client back then and the client now. Um, I ask Lady Master Kuan Yin and the Karmic Board to come forth the words again, we're here. So I ask then, I ask Kuan Yin, if a divine decree of forgiveness could be expressed by my client to help come to closure with this karma, with this unfinished business. If the answer is yes, then 
we need to make sure that everyone who is karmically involved in what happened in that past life and in this life to current lifetime joins us. So everybody can be a part of that divine decree of forgiveness. So I invite all of them to join us. And I ask the client, how many additional people show up? And who are they? Um, and we engage them, if necessary, in finding out more about their role in the story back then and the story right now. Then, once we have everything set up with what wants to happen, what happened way back when, who the key people are, so we know what the relationships are from those involved, I ask my client to be the spokesperson to repeat after me the words that follow and to say them with as much heartfelt feeling as possible. This is being said through the heart of the client. And it begins, the Christ in me, then add your name, forgives you, or in this case, if more than one person, all of you present, for all your actions in thought, word, or deed in this and all lifetimes. And then repeat these words after me with a great deal of heartfelt feeling. And the Christ in you, or the Christ in each of you, present now, forgives me, saying your name once again, for all my actions in thought, word, or deed in this and all lifetimes. And then repeat this after me with a great deal of feeling and emotion. And we all release this through all lifetimes through all parallel lives and all dimensions, throughout time and space and all aspects of self to zero negative infinity now. And I use a Tibetan bell chime. Then repeating this with a great deal of emotion. And we all release this and move on to our higher good. And so it is. And then I chime in with, I ask through all of our masters, teachers, and guides from the highest light to assist in correcting what we have just done today to divine truth and divine perfection now. And I use the Tibetan bell chime again. Then I ask the client, what did you notice just now? How are you feeling? What about the others who were a part of this divine decree? Take a look at them. What just happened? How do they appear to you? How did they respond? I then ask my client's inner wisdom team, Kuan Yin, Archangel Michael, and all the others present from the light to speak in a collective voice and answer this question. Was this divine decree sufficient to resolve this particular issue? If not, if they say no, is there anything else that we can do right now to come to closure with this karma or these issues affecting my client? If so, what wants to happen next? And they'll share it with me. Then I ask Archangel Michael Kuan Yin, Inner Wisdom Team, what can my client expect to see or feel or know now that we've come to closure with this issue? They'll share that with us. And are there any other karmic contracts that are affecting my client that we can come to closure with right now? If so, should we go into those stories, find out what happened, bring the key people together, and do another divine decree of forgiveness to help those particular issues, yes or no? On occasion, I will do a divine decree of forgiveness with with the client in separate situations, if need be, as the session continues to unfold? And if not, the answer is no. What wants to happen next to come to closure with this unfinished business? Can we do anything else besides going into um, a divine decree of, of forgiveness? Again, all the answers to these questions is coming through the client. The client is channeling this information through first thought, first feeling, first image, first voice. So, in hopes that perhaps, let's say now that yes, we were able to resolve this, I will then ask 
because initially we had intrud intruders present, perhaps earthbound spirit, perhaps negative entity, perhaps something else. Is the intruder still present within my client's energy field? Yes or no? And if yes, um, are there any other non-karmic issues related to this intruder that we need to address now for my client's highest good before we send this energy into the light or back where it came from? So we figure that out again through the presence of all the, all the wisdom that is with us, getting their thoughts about what we can do next, what wants to happen. On achieving that, I invite, I ask the client, do you want this intruder to affect you any longer? And of course they say no, but I need them to say that because they're in charge of themselves. Um, so I want you client to speak your truth through your heart to that intruder right now and tell them that it is time for him to leave. Um, and once that has been done, I invite Archangel Michael and the Angels of the White Light to join us with words like, we're here. And so I ask them then to um, take the intruder out of the client and send them into the light at the count of three. And I ask the client to watch this happen to make sure that the intruder leaves the client's energy field and goes into the light or back where it came from at one, two, three, go now. I clap my hands and ask then to the uh, client, has the intruder left? So hopefully the answer is yes. So with this having been accomplished, I bring in the cleanup teams of light and you'll see the complete protocol um, for this in the transcript of the session. But just very briefly, the first paragraph is, in the name of the light, I call on the cleanup teams of light. Move deep inside clean and cleanse every cell of her physical body, every aspect of her mental, emotional, etheric, and higher bodies, every chakra level, every compartment of mind, every track of emotion. Lift the residues left by all those who are violating her space. Disconnect any lacerates of consciousness from any other being into her being. Remove any accumulated sludge that are left behind, anything that's not purely of her own being because my client has the right to her own sovereign space, to move forward on her own chosen path in this life and future lives. She has the right to be free. So as you move through cleanup teams, leave every part of her filled with light. In the name of the light that we, we thank you. And it goes on for a few more paragraphs, just bringing in the physicians of light, the healing angels of light, and so on, to assist in making sure that we clean the client out of all that negativity, thoughts, feelings, attitudes, and beliefs that no longer serve her, that were brought in to her by the intruders or whatever it is that we're seeking to, to release. Um, and finally, I call on the Divine Mother to unfold her in light and love, touching into her pure heart, restoring the beauty of her sweet being the essence of this child of God. So this is one of the ways that I then bring the session to um, this, this part of the session to a close. Um, so up to this point now, my hope is that we have been focusing on the key issues that the client wants to focus on with the help of the Inner Wisdom team. We have brought in help to, in fact, uh, find out cause or source, and at the same time, help to resolve these issues. And so it's time to wrap things up, at least go to the next level, uh, next step in the process. So. I invite the client to imagine themselves um, in a special place or sanctuary. And in fact, to go to that sanctuary right now, a place where she feels safe and protected. And my hope is that she can easily go there in her imagination in the coming days again, in the weeks ahead, to reconnect with the members of her inner wisdom team. So go there right now, Alice, to that place and describe it to me. Is it inside, outside, or whatever? Oh, I'm sitting in a meadow beneath an oak tree on a beautiful spring day, feeling safe and protected. The mountains are to my left, the oceans to my right. Perfect. Any place is fine where they feel safe and protected. So, Alice, as you're sitting in your sanctuary feeling safe right now, let's invite your heart to join you. How does your heart now make itself known to you? 
Well, we've been working with your heart for the last hour and 15 minutes. So my hope is that you're on a first name basis with your heart. <laughs> so I invite you then to describe how your heart makes itself known to you now in your sanctuary. Oh, it's a red heart right out in front of me. Wonderful, but it's probably even more defined because we've been working with the heart. Um, and so we invite your higher self to join us. How do you now experience your higher self's energy? Again, describe it to me. And where is it in relationship to you in your sanctuary? Would you like Archangel Michael to be a part of your inner wisdom team? If so, let's invite him. And where is he in relationship to the other members of your team? Oh, it's this large um, winged um, master off to my right. Um, great. All right. What about Lady Master Kuan Yin? If you'd like her to be part of your team, where is she? Perhaps your grandmother showed up during the session. Where would you like her to be? Perhaps you have spirit guides or spirit animals that you'd like to have with you. Again, I ask you, it's your place, your sanctuary. I want you to be surrounded by your wisdom. So once we've placed everybody around you, I then ask um, for from your team, a spokesperson to come forth um, and answer this question. How have we helped my client today during our session? And invite that spokesperson to announce his or her presence with words like, I'm here. So a voice says, I'm here. And I ask, what name will we call you? So we can know who it's, who's talking. How have we helped Alice during our session today? And I write down each of the accomplishments mentioned by the spokesperson. I then ask for a spokesperson to come forth with an overall message for my client from her inner wisdom team. Who shows up with words like, I'm here? I write down the name. Thank you for coming. What name may we call you? And what is your overall message for my client from her inner wisdom team? I write that down as well. I then tell the client that by visiting this place regularly, she can build a strong relationship with her inner wisdom team and get answers that she can trust about next steps in her life. I then bring the session to a close. And I then, as a follow-up, send an email to the client with a link to the recording of the session. I encourage her to listen to the MP3 because it can take off additional layers of thoughts, feelings, attitudes, and beliefs that no longer serve her. Plus, I include a link to my higher self shortcut. It's my voice, hypnotic conduct, oh, my, it's my voice, hypnotic music in the background that guides her into trance and then on up into the light, into the fifth dimension very quickly. And I invite her to use the higher self shortcut as training wheels to return to her sanctuary and to reconnect with her inner wisdom team. Because as I mentioned, my goal is for her to begin to work with this team, with her intuition, and maybe connect with them daily or whenever she chooses to help her move forward in her life. I also include some helpful handouts with the email on how best to connect with her team, sample questions to ask, how to prime the pump. I, use, I include a list of 21 essential angels and a piece on how to manifest what you want in your life and other useful resources. We then get together a week later for a follow-up session of about an hour or so, so I can help process and integrate the client um, and all that we accomplished during that initial session. Again, phone, Zoom, or Skype. During this session, right up front, I recount the goals that we set the previous week. And then I turn to the client and ask the client, okay, what shifted? What hasn't? What have you been thinking about? Any synchronicities? Have you listened to the recording? If so, any comments or questions? But most of the time is spent with me going through my notes, taking you step by step through the session, describing what I was doing and why, and underscoring the wisdom coming from the client. In other words, helping her connect the dots and allowing her to get even more benefit from the session. Towards the end of that, um, I'll then ask about um, how are things going connecting with your inner wisdom team? We can practice that. And then at the very end, we decide whether we need to get together again. And if so, um, we decide 
uh, if, if we do, do uh, we, we can decide then to get together and pick up where we left off with the inner wisdom team and so on. Um, or we get together in six months if they want me to help them with a particular issue that they're seeking to resolve. But what I found is the clients will continue to work with their inner wisdom team on their own and continue to get more guidance uh, as they navigate their life. So what I'm offer here is short term therapy. Typically, I'll see a client for one two hour session and a one hour or so follow up session. So with that being said, let me then talk about some uh, notes from clients, the session notes that I have went through for to prepare for today's session. And I'll go through them to give you a sense of how this really all fits together. Bob, not his real name, but one of my clients, presenting issues. Bob was curious about his past life experiences and wanted to know how he could keep evolving in his present life. Okay, so took him into trance, up into the fifth dimension, into the light, and he described being in the light as a golden light. I'm surrounded by beings. Everyone is happy and we're enveloped in love. Good. So let's invite your heart to join us. How does your heart make itself known to you? I feel my heart's loving energy in my mind. Okay, heart come forth now with words like I'm here. How do you support Bob? I reinforce the love that Bob has and point out the things that he needs to be grateful for. Okay. So Hart, are you aware of Bob's higher self? Yes. Can we invite his higher self to join us? Yes. Let's do so now. And the higher self said, it's who I am. I think, great. From my perspective, I really enjoy that to have happened because it's the higher self taking charge. So higher self, what's your purpose in being with Bob? I keep him on the path. I help him believe and trust his intuition. All right, so we formed an inner wisdom team and invited Bob to see himself in front of a magic mirror of truth. As he looked into the mirror, he saw a golden light above his head and a picture of a smiling face. Okay, so we invited that energy to come forth and talk to us with words like, I'm here. Are you a part of Bob or something else? I'm a part of Bob. How do you affect Bob? I remind him of the light and love that Bob shines on the world. I protect him. Okay. So this is a positive part of Bob. It could be a, a guide, a spirit guide, or just a very positive part of him. So I asked that positive part, what name we might call it. So Bob could work with this energy in the future. And we were told it's Bob's inner soul. Great. So we asked permission from the heart and higher self to add this part to his inner wisdom team. And we also ask it to serve as a resource during Bob's meditations in the future. So then I asked Archangel Michael to join us and to scan Bob's energy field. Are there any intruders present? And he said, yes. How many? Three. Okay. What's the purpose of these intruders? Why are they present? Their purpose was to prevent Bob's soul from evolving. They were holding him back and causing self-doubt in his life. In fact, we got that by inviting those intruders to come forth as a collective voice and talking to me. I then asked Archangel Michael, is there a karmic contract from an important past life that has allowed them to affect Bob's current lifetime? He said, yes. All right. So we asked Lady Master Kuan Yin and the karmic board to join us. We're here. They told us that we needed to take Bob into that particular lifetime in order to come to closure with the unfinished business from that lifetime. Okay, so we needed to go into the life rather than to invite the key uh, players of that life to come and join us in the present. So we did so. We went back into the life and Bob saw himself as a shaman whose son was evol involved in a major battle with another tribe and that his young son was killed in that major battle. Moving forward, Bob realized that in order to move forward in his present life, he needed to release his son's spirit and the spirits of all those on both sides who died in that battle. So we then brought forth the shaman. Um, and the shaman also needed to forgive himself for not being there to protect his son 
and his people. We were told that the karmic lesson for Bob was, I have to love myself knowing I did everything I could. This is part of my soul's journey. So with that knowledge being present, we invited both sides who died in that battle to join us, together with all their loved ones who had mourned their deaths. So everybody came in and joined us at that point from the past life. And Bob told me, I asked him, how many people show up? He said, hundreds of people have shown up together with their loved ones and what he called, Bob called, the Creator God. All right. So I asked Bob then, in the presence of the Creator God and all these souls, to express a divine decree of forgiveness through his heart on behalf of the Creator God and everyone present. Once he'd completed that decree, I asked Bob to report on what had just occurred. He told me that he felt a heavy burden had been lifted, not only within himself, but within everybody present. My heart's sorrow has been healed. My son is at peace. There is a sense of peace all around. My client then looked into the eyes of his son from that life and realized that it is his son in his current life today. I then asked Kuan Yin in the comic board if there's anything else that needed to happen as a result of this, um, to come to closure even further with this karmic issue. And they said, no, we had done what needed to occur. Now, right up front, we'd met those three intruders. And so I um, asked, let me see, I asked Archangel Michael to join us. And after, uh, and to, let me see. Yes, um, the, they were still present. So I asked Archangel Michael to, with the angels of the white light, to escort the three intruders into the light and to make, uh, make sure Bob watched them as they left to ensure they did, in fact, go back into the light. And at the end of the, um, at the, end of the session, I asked for a spokesperson for Bob's inner wisdom team to come forth and tell us how we'd help Bob during the session. It turned out to be his higher self. And this is what the higher self reported. Number one, we eliminated the three negative energy sources. Number two, we took his heart and cleansed it of the sorrows of the planet and of the earth and replaced those with gratitude and grace and peace and love. And number three, we told Bob that his purpose is to help earth and humans and creatures. Number four, we found a place where Bob can go to enter this meditative state and receive higher knowledge from his inner wisdom team and others from the light in this sanctuary. Number five, Bob discovered a past life that led to a healing for Bob, the tribe, and all the others affected. So then I asked for a spokesperson to share an overall message with Bob from his inner wisdom team. Who shows up? The higher self showed up. I'm here, it said. And he asked Bob to remember this mantra. I was brought to earth to lead a loving, peaceful, and joyful existence. And most importantly, to teach others to do the same. And what pleased me hearing this was it harkens back to Bob's goal at the beginning of the session. His intention was to find out what he needed to do to keep evolving in this present lifetime. In other words, by the end of the session, he was told by his guidance to teach others to lead a loving, peaceful, and joyful existence. So we brought the session to a close. So what I'd like to do is to go into session number two to give you again another example of how all this fits together. Let's call her um, uh, Elaine. Um, Elaine experienced nightly upper stomach pain. Her doctor could not find anything physically wrong. She also wanted to connect with her higher self and spirit guides. And she was wondering if her ancestors had any messages for her. Took her up into the light, a weightless, airy environment. Asked her heart to come through. It's like a pumping muscle out in front of me, Elaine said. Purpose of the heart? 
I give her feeling. I give her life. I give her, I feel her soul. Elaine told me that her higher self showed up for her as a short, cute Asian girl. And in fact, Elaine um, was Asian. Um, so I asked her higher self, how does, uh, how do you support Elaine? Higher self said, I try to bring awareness to her. I try to help her be the best she can be. I'm hard on her sometimes. I raise the bar. I love her. I'm always interested when try is being used by heart or higher self because it shows there's something going on there that is preventing the client from being um, more easily getting through these particular issues. So in the magic mirror of truth, Elaine saw an orange yellow blended energy all around her. She told me there were other energies behind that image of herself but she couldn't see them. Okay, so we invited the orange blended, yellow blended energy to join us. I'm here. Are you a part of, Al of Elaine or something else? I'm her fifth dimensional part. I give Elaine her soul. I try to support her desires and what she wants to pursue. I look out for Elaine. So we invited her inner wisdom team and Archangel Michael to join us. We're here. What should we focus on first? I asked them. And they said, focus on the physical pain in Elaine's stomach. So we invited her stomach pain to come forth and talk to us with words like, I'm here. I'm here, said your stomach pain. How are you affecting and why are you affecting Elaine? You told us it was there to punish Elaine. Her life had been too good. She was kind of spoiled, said the stomach. All right, so, uh, so I asked her inner wisdom team, is the cause of this stomach pain due to something that happened to her in this life or a past life? And they said it was from this life and a past life. And they told us that a karmic agreement was involved. All right, so we invited Kuan Yin and the karmic board to join us. And they told us that the cause was Elaine's relationship with her ancestors. And we were told we did not need to go into the story. Kuan Yin indicated that we could simply invite the key players from that ancestral line to join us as a group. Who shows up? Three ancestors showed up, according to Elaine, from her dad's side of her family. Her grandfather, her great-grandfather, and her great-great-grandfather. These three men told us that their burial site in Taiwan had been affected by bad energy. They told Elaine that this was not her fault, that she'd been a good granddaughter, but Elaine had veered away from respecting her ancestors. So the grandfather said to me, we are in bad energy now. So we're taking Elaine's good energy from her, creating the pain in her stomach. Hmm. So I asked Kwanian what wants to happen? Well, she suggested a divine decree that could help clear that bad energy. So we invited everyone to join us from the ancestral line. And Elaine told me that a total of 10 ancestors showed up, including three unborn children. Okay. So we were also told that in addition to those present, we needed to invite any energy that Elaine had ever offended, either knowingly or unknowingly, to be present as well. Plus, we were told we needed to invite all the physical and non-physical energy that had caused Elaine's suffering from her current life and past lives. Plus, we were told her dad and mom needed to show up as well. So we had quite a group <laughs> present during this particular part of our session. But Elaine then stepped up, expressed the divine decree of forgiveness through her heart to all present. So afterwards, I asked her, what shifted? And here's what she said. This feels wonderful. All those who joined me for the divine decree are now ascending, smiling, and moving away. I feel like I'm in the clouds. I then asked for feedback from Kuan Yin and Alice's, uh, Elaine's inner wisdom team. And they told us, Elaine is a new person. The burden has been lifted. Her molecules are changing. She's become lighter already. 
Elaine is on the right path now. This is just the beginning of a new start for Elaine. And we were told that the pain in her stomach would now start healing. And then I asked for an overall message from her inner wisdom team at the end of the session. You should be so proud of yourself. This was delivered by your higher self. You did well today. Stay on the path and don't get sidetracked by a busy life. You are super special to us. There is so much more for you to learn and we will be there to support you. In my follow-up session a week later, Elaine reported that her stomach pains had lessened dramatically and she felt so much more in control of her life. I want to focus on one more person, if we may. This is Joyce. Joyce experienced pain in her body due to rheumatoid arthritis. She wanted to come to closure with any contracts or agreements that she'd caused that had caused this health issue. And she brought a number of other issues to be resolved. So I'm focusing now on just this part of it involving the karma that uh, occurred during the two hour session. I guided Joyce up into the light. She described it as being in that higher vibration as cloud-like with positive beings present all around her. We invited her heart to come forth is a feeling in my chest. The purpose of her heart, I love her. I see her as she really is. I remind her of that. I make her cry when she's touched and moved. Higher self comes forth. It's a knowing energy. Purpose of Joyce's higher self. I guide her and show her the truth. I lead her and take her by the hand. In the magic mirror of truth, Joyce saw a golden white light of pulsating energy filling about half the mirror. We asked the energy to join us. I'm here. Are you a part of Joyce or something else? I'm a part of Joyce. I'm the energy of lightness, of being, and laughter. I've been with Joyce forever. So we asked this resource for a name that we might call it, and a report responded, Susan. Any name's fine. So we invited Susan to join the Inner Wisdom team, along with Archangel Michael. So then I asked the team, what should we work on next? And they said, break Joyce's karmic contracts. Okay, so karma's involved. Let's bring in Kuan Yin and the karmic board. They joined us. And Kuan Yin told us there are 50 agreements from multiple past lives and this life that contained themes and patterns that were causing Joyce's rheumatoid arthritis. So we were invited all the key people from these different lifetimes to join us as a group. I asked um, her how many people show up. And she said about 20 showed up. So I asked for a spokesperson to come forth from the group with words like, I'm here. I'm here, he said. What name may we call you? Joe, he said. Well, I'm hoping Joe's from the light, but I don't know. So I asked him, are you in service to the light and love of the one infinite creator? And he said, yes. And I felt that not only with Joe present, but also Archangel Michael and Kuan Yin and the others that we were dealing with a very high vibrational being. Joe told us that the cause of Joyce's rheumatoid arthritis was her ignorance that brought harm to others in so many different lifetimes. What goes around comes around. Joe told us that Joyce had gotten away with this ignorance in these past lives, but it needed to be resolved right now as an important soul lesson for her to learn in this particular lifetime. So I asked if Joyce could use the divine decree of forgiveness and we were told yes. So she said that to, through her heart to all those who joined us from all those different lifetimes. Afterwards, I asked Joe to come forth and tell us how things had gone. And he said it was, the session was successfully completed. And in fact, her heart then reported to us that, that as well. Um, so at the end of the session, I asked for a spokesperson from Joyce's Inner Wisdom team to come forth and share what had happened. Um, and who would like to deliver that message? Her heart, reporting the follow her heart reported the following results. Joyce had experienced a gigantic cleansing of stuck energy. Her energy was now flowing once again. Number two, we'd reminded Joyce of who she really is. I asked them, well, who is Joyce? And they responded, love. Number three, we called in those from the past and um, 
uh, and, and and all those um, that were all those energies and so on, and we were able to clean her out of those energies. And number four, we brought in the light and expanded it within Joyce. I then asked for a spokesperson to share an overall message with Joyce from her inner wisdom team. Who would like to deliver the message? Kuan Yin said, I'm here. All right, so this is Kuan Yin's message. Remember who you are. No, I'm, rem I'm sorry. Remember who you are in truth and come to us and sit in this special sanctuary so we can communicate with you more often. We are here for you always. So remember that and let's talk. Also, you are making great progress in the evolution of your soul and the progress of the planet. You are making great progress. As you move forward, you will help everyone else move forward around you. Your light is expanding to others. Forgiveness is happening and the truth is there for you in every moment. In our hour long follow-up session a week later, Joyce reported to me that three days after the session, the rheumatoid arthritis was dissipating and that she was and could at last easily open up jars and cans with her hands. Plus she could walk much further now without pain. So with those three uh, client summaries, if you will, I'd like to bring my presentation to a close and I look forward to responding to any questions or comments from those present. So Holly will be happy to call on whoever would like to talk and come on down. Okay, because I can't see all of you on one screen, if you would like to raise your hand, that'll bring you the little uh, reaction button. That'll bring everybody up. Everybody? Yes, Georgina. Do you ever get any beings from the higher realm saying, no, we're not going to help her. She needs to do what she knows she needs to do first. www.ibrt.org. Um, yes, yes, yeah, that happens. Absolutely. So then I ask, what is it she needs to do first for herself to know right now so right. she can begin doing that? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Peter, do you ever have anyone who you ask if they're from the light, from the highest good, say no, that they're not? Yes. And what, I ask do you do, what do you do then? I ask them to step aside, to leave immediately. Um, IBRT.org. Somebody's got, who's just said IBRT.org? Somebody's mic is on that needs to get turned off. There we go. Okay, thank you. So, um, yes, we, I invite them to leave immediately and not come back. And then I ask for the, their true um, Archangel Michael or whomever to show up and ask that same question. Are you in service of light and love of the one infinite creator? Do you ever have a client who just can't respond? They're just so blocked that they can't respond? Yes, that happens on occasion. Yes. Um, and so, um, and, and it's because there's so much, neg what I think one of the reasons is there's so much negativity with them mm -hmm. or whatever that is blocking them. Um, so I just bring this session to a close. Um, as I say, this is not work that's for everybody. That's why I spend so much time up front seeing if there's a match based on the issues we're seeking to resolve and their own uh, openness to this kind of approach. Because as you all know, it's very different from talk therapy. They're playing a key role, a partner um, in the session with all the guidance. I have a question. What do you do if they don't leave when you ask them to leave? Meaning the... the well, you energy. said if they add their right intention, please leave. What happens if they don't leave? Well, we invite Archangel Michael to take them out. Take them away. Surround well, them with nets and resist that. That. So saying. you've never had anybody stuck around then that you didn't want? Well, I, I, I can't see them, but I'm depending upon the guidance coming through the client and me that all is well because i will say on occasion is my is are, are both my client and i safe in the light now and if the answer is no then i ask archangel michael to come and stand in front of us behind us on either side of us above us and beneath us creating you know we're just bringing in lots of light um, and layers of of protection so that we are protected at all times that is critical 
And right up front at the beginning of the hypnotic induction, I surround the client with a bubble or shield of white protective light uh, because I want them to feel safe and protected at all times. And if they're not, to tell me so we can bring in more help. Thank you. Georgina, you had your hand up. And then Howard after Georgina. Um, do you ha ever have clients that make it up? They have a sense of drama or they've read something somewhere and they want to do what it said in the book? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And so prior to the session, I send a uh, one page uh, piece that I developed saying, uh, what if I think I'm making it all up? <laughs> and I seek to help uh, puncture that um, if I can. But that's one of the issues that I work with in the follow up session. Oh, I made the whole thing up. Well, no, you didn't. So I go through my notes, hoping that that will help prove to them. But again, it's belief systems. There's only so much I can do, but I'm happy to support them in coming up with reasons why um, and what and maybe shifts that have taken place for them that will underscore that fact for them as well. Howard? Oops, we need you to un unmute yourself, Howard. I think I'm unmuted now. Right, in, in regard to Michael's uh, question, about what, uh, what do you do if they don't go away? Uh, I was taught by my guide that the proper response in that uh, situation is to firmly stand in your own light mm -hmm. and address them squarely and say, being or whoever in the name of the one infinite creator i command that you leave my presence now permanently forever so be it and they always have 100 percent of the time nobody has stuck around after that because you've brought in so much light a negative being just can't stand to be in your presence anymore thank you howard Yep. Other questions? Geraldine? Hi, yes. I have a question. And this is a question that um, I'm kind of trying to understand myself and my own practice. Thank you so much for that incredible presentation, by the way. I really love how you were so in detail with the kind of technique that you use. Um, one question that I have is about fragmentation. How do you deal with the client that now at the end of the session has had this incredible realization and feels supported by their guides, but then has a difficult time reintegrating, I guess, long-term, the ability to see themselves as these guides or you know, as everything. This is something that I run into and I have a bit of a conflict there in, in how to address that. Do you have any insight? For me, I uh, talk about chemicalization um, at the very end of the session. Have you heard that term before? Just no. Okay. No. From, um, from my perspective, chemicalization is a metaphysical term, which means that during the session, we've gotten rid of a lot of stuff, hopefully, that is no longer um, part of the client or that energy is leaving the client's thoughts, feelings, attitudes, and beliefs. It's going, hallelujah, it's going. But it's with them, been with the client for quite a while. So they may, over the next few days, feel a little out of sorts, a little, oh, because it's all that old familiar stuff isn't there and it's been replaced by, or it's being replaced by good stuff, uh, positive thoughts, feelings, attitudes, and beliefs. So I invite the client to drink a lot of water, walk out in nature. I send them a, in the follow-up, a sheet on chemicalization, describing what the symptoms might be, to um, nurture themselves, take good care of themselves, and that I'm available to talk with them during that week or whatever, if questions come up or experiences come up that they'd like some feedback on or some support with. Because again, this is not necessarily easy work, but for those who are committed, it can be so um, helpful to them in rather quickly letting go of what no longer serves them. And then in the follow-up session, Right up front, I'll say, you know, what shifted, what hasn't, what have you been feeling, how have things been going, talking about that right up front, reinforcing chemicalization, and then going through my notes, taking them step by step through the, the session, because they may not remember the specifics, 
but by going back through the notes, they remember a great, so much of it and they're able to make the connections um, to integrate what occurred. Um, and then towards the end of that, um, reconnecting with their higher self and heart in their inner, um, in their sanctuary helps them again to ground themselves back in that safe space. So it's just, I'm there to support. Everybody's different, but I find it is not as much of a problem as I thought it would be. Um, and if, if cl clearly it's not the right match for the client right up front, we stop the session and I don't charge them for it. And uh, just a quick follow-up question. Obviously, you know, our Archangel Michael is an example, but you would utilize whatever resonates with them or whatever they want to utilize, right? Okay. Absolutely. And that's why right up front, I ask, you know, um, for what their term is for the higher being and are there any uh, figures that they, they turn to um, right. in their own journey. Excellent, thank you. Rachel. Thank you so much, that was really awesome. I am a total newbie to this, but I'm curious to know um, what in the initial conversation you're having with one of your clients, what would signify this type of like approach? Like what kind of buzzwords or what kinds of stories are you hearing that make you think this is the approach to use? Um, for me, almost any issue can be resolved by this approach, whether it's um, anger, fear, depression, anxiety, um, uh, hearing voices within themselves, um, really almost anything um, can be used to help the client connect with their wisdom and ask you their own wisdom what wants to happen. A lot of my clients feel stuck. So we invite that stuckness to come forth. You know, where are you holding on to that stuckness um, in your body right now? As you think about that particular, in fact, what I do during the session, no, during the, um, the uh, consultation, I'll ask the client to come up with an issue right now that they'd like to resolve and a negative emotion they'd like to have less of. Could be anger, fear, whatever it might be. And to close their eyes for just a moment and to feel um, the, um, how that fear affects them. And as they feel how that fear affects them, where do you feel it right now in your body? Oh, it's in my chest. All right, so as you feel that fear in your chest right now, what color is it? First thought, oh, it's red. What's the shape of that red fear in your heart right now? Oh, it's a circle. All right. So can you take your mind, your awareness, and surround that red fear, that red circle of fear in your chest right now? Taking control of it with your awareness, with your mind, surrounding it. Because up until now, it's been controlling you. And as you surround it with your mind, I want you to squeeze it. And if that um, fear could speak, what would it say? First thought. And whatever the first thought is, the client will tell me. So then I say, okay, so what we do in a session is we invite that fear to come forth right now and talk to us, giving it a voice, channeling it, because I have some questions for that fear. For example, how long have you been with Mary? How have you been affecting her? Who hired you? And what wants to happen to release you? And I find that by asking those questions in the presence of your heart, your higher self, and all the guidance with us, they know where we need to go, whether it's this life, a past life, or somewhere else, and they'll take us there. And so that, to me, that's a very effective way to quickly show them in the consultation the type of questions I'll be asking during the session and allows me to know, are they able to experience that energy and give a voice to it? Because channeling, them channeling that energy is key for a successful session. I think that's kind of what I was thinking, because I feel like that would be easy for me to do. But the more I practice with people, I realize like the varying degrees of ability to reach this stuff and to connect to it. So that's kind of what I was thinking. I'm like, wow, this seems really complex. Awesome. <laughs> but I'm kind of thinking to myself, if it was somebody who was inexperienced in this, it might be hard for some people to experience all of this. And then one other thing I'll add to this. Um, I talk about left brain versus right brain. And I mentioned for me that the left brain is that analytical part of us. It keeps the heart beating. It keeps the um, 
uh, 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 the, the muscles moving. It is our conscious mind, our subconscious mind, our ego, our to-do list. Often it's how we navigate our lives. Um, it's talk therapy. Hooray! But equally important is the right brain. For me, the right brain is your emotions, your, um, uh, um, your pass, your I'm sorry, your physical body. Your, um, your, your right brain remembers um, your past lives. It is your imagination. It is your connection to your heart and your higher self, because through them we have access to all your guidance. So, for my clients who are really left brain. That means the accountants, the engineers, they're so analytical, they live their lives out of their left brain. Right up front, beginning of the session, I invite them to ask their left brain to sit on their left shoulder throughout the session, take careful notes and shut up. And I ask <laughs> the right brain, heart and higher self, to sit on the right shoulder um, because and invite their friends to come down from the other side and lead the session. They do and they do. So it's a broader palette of resources we're talking about that is very much different from the old left brain. Does that help? Uh, thank you. Any more questions? <laughs>